You know, on this channel, we are no strangers to Shem Phillips and his works. I mean, we've covered the Raiders series, we've covered Hadrian's Wall, and most recently, we've covered Paladins of the West Kingdom. Like a harbinger of retroactive things to come, it was my introduction into the West Kingdom trilogy, which today, we are taking a look at the progenitor, the initial release that started it all with the West kingdom being architects so let's take a look at what is this game unlike other games of its ilk architects is a game of worker investment you have an enormous pool of workers and on your turn you can assign one to a location usually regardless of how many workers are already there and reap larger rewards based on how many of your own you've already placed First worker placed gets one wood, next worker you place gets two, so on and so on. The thing is that eventually your enormous pile begins to dwindle and so there are worker spots to reclaim your own or even capture other players workers and other players workers can be sent to jail, reaping you some cash and throwing shade on them which will result in penalties at certain intervals unless they take actions at the jail to free their workers or pay off debts. But in large, this is all in service of gathering loads of resources to permanently commit unrecoverable workers to construction, where you can participate in the communal building of a cathedral or your own personal buildings for points and immediate or long-term bonuses. To help with these endeavors, you have apprentices. Not only are these cards that you can acquire with some pretty sweet abilities, they also serve as the suits, the three symbols that are oftentimes prerequisites in order to build a lot of the buildings that you'll end up drawing into your hand. Now, as far as the abilities, these trigger upon certain events. Most often, you putting a worker on a specific worker spot associated with that apprentice or it might be that the black market reset happens and you get some sort of triggered bonus out of that. Ultimately, these are one of the things that give you the most variety in the game, playing into the different strategies, when they synergize together, when they synergize with your overall strategy and focus, and when they synergize with the asymmetric player powers, which you can optionally play with in this game, which I strongly recommend that you do flip the player boards over and play with the asymmetric side to give you a little bit of a different start and a little bit of a different focus and to give you a little bit more strategic oomph and direction and when all those components are working together it's a beautiful thing now one of my favorite things about this game one of the big highlights to me is the virtue system a track off to the side of the board that's going to start you in the middle and you'll go up or down throughout the game upon doing certain things basically you do good Good stuff you go up on virtue you do bad stuff you go down on virtue but what's really interesting about it is not only are point bonuses or losses at the end of the game associated with being high and low but they also gatekeep certain actions if you're too high on that track you won't be able to access the black market actions which in and of themselves reduce your virtue if you go to them and on top of that if you're already scum at the bottom of the virtue track you don't care about mundane trivial things like paying your taxes and the financial coin cost to pay for certain actions is going to be reduced by one or two coins which is really significant so it works as a sort of rubber band and catch-up mechanic and if you play it right you can use it as a nice dance throughout the game in order to either drive towards virtue at the beginning and be able to drive towards building the the cathedral and getting lots of points or pull back a little reap some rewards and then pull forward. It's a source of a lot of interesting choices and the way that it embeds with the rest of the decisions that you're going to make in the game is really cool. This game made a really fantastic impression on me. I really love the, the tempo, the momentum of the game that just has this immediacy to it. And there's this untethered agency that I really love about it where you can make all of these decisions that are going to reap so many rewards. But as the game goes on, you become progressively more restricted, not only because you have less workers, but as you decide who you want to recall, there's a delicate balance in deciding 
who to recall and when because you don't want to lose out on that investment of so many workers on an individual spot and kill your momentum, which makes for some really juicy decisions. If I had any complaints about it, it's that while the game does feel like every aspect of it is essential and necessary, it's not as cohesive as I really expected. You don't need to access everything in the game, and in some games, you can just kind of bypass entire things. I've seen games at this point where no one was accessing the black market because they wanted to avoid the virtue penalties, or no one was pursuing the cathedral, but that may be strategically a bad idea because if one person is capitalizing on either of those elements and no one else is, then you can really exploit the access to those things and the advantages that they give. The point being that there's a, a looseness to how things are tethered together. A lot of this may be reinforced by how unrestricted the game feels. I mean, the only real pressure that you have in this game is to be as efficient as possible and to trigger the end of the game by filling all the building spots for your player count and getting as many points by the end of the game. There's no real aspect of it where you and opponents are chasing over one specific thing in the game. And even though there is the capture mechanic, the penalties are hardly severe. So it never really feels like you're coming into a real heavy contention with anyone else, which is exactly where Works of Wonder comes in. There are really two types of expansion and works as a bit of both. It's a more stuff expansion and a new stuff expansion. You have more characters to play, more buildings to build, more apprentices to take on, and more reward cards to earn, all adorned with the same fantastic illustrations by Mihalo Dimitrevsky. These alone are great and just add more variety to the game. But the new features are pretty substantial as well, with a whole new board including the influence track, contribution and consequence cards, and the princess and profiteer who make the whole thing work together. Each have a pawn set out on the board, then using the action space with the profiteer also gives you free influence, but the princess allows you to, in addition to the action of the location she's on, contribute to the kingdom, paying a resource that is yet to be contributed for lots of influence and sometimes other rewards. During black market resets, which themselves can now trigger if all the contribution track has been filled up, these contributions go to the wonders, big fat building cards that can be built by any player then placed on the board to give the owner a bonus when visiting there. And each contributed resource reduces its cost by one, so they're going to be snagged up the closer you get to the end of the game. Then, continuing the black market reset, players hanging out with the profiteer or princess get a reward or a penalty. Then a new consequence card is flipped, the pawns move to new locations, and the game proceeds. So, a majority of your interaction with the princess and the profiteer is in order to gain influence. And not only is influence necessary to buy the wonders, but crossing certain thresholds on the new track gives you building cards, and you can spend influence to reduce gold, marble, and coin costs, or avoid virtue penalties. So it's a new point of intersection in the game, a pillar where you have alternative routes to obtain some of the more elusive resources. Works of Wonder is a try it before you buy it expansion for me, or rather at least try Architects of the West Kingdom and think critically about the things that you love most about that game. I do like Works of Wonder and I intend to keep on playing with it, but it does come at a cost in order to add it to the game. I think it makes for a more robust experience and addresses any of my criticisms and in some ways just makes it feel like a, a stronger, more cohesive experience. But that does come at the cost of being more complex and slows down some of the momentum and immediacy that was so great about Architects in the first place. Nowhere is this more felt than in the black market reset phase, now with a bonkers number of individual specific steps that must be carried out in order. Add to that the princess and the profiteer undermining optimum strategies, adding a greater opportunity cost to everything you do, which is great, but higher stakes means harder decisions, which makes for a somewhat less snappy game. 
but in doing so, the expansion really addresses my criticisms and adds some oomph to a game I already liked. Through the wonders and contributions, you have more to compete over with opponents. With the Princess and Profiteer, the game encourages you to be more creative in your decisions, tethering it all together, and then minor things like starting players with a drafted apprentice, where increasing the apprentices on display means you have a bit extra asymmetry out the gate and are less likely to find yourself without the symbols you need. And the influence tracks access to cards and the scarcer resources give more paths and flexibility. So my impressions, I like it. I want it. It does some great things with an already great game. It does come at a certain degree of expense, but what you get far outweighs the cost of integrating it. And that is our review. But let us know, what do you think? Have you played this expansion? What is your favorite of the West Kingdom games? And should I do a review of Viscounts? And speaking of reviews, I didn't really cover much on the solo game because it's enough of a different beast. And we had so much to cover between the base game and the expansion that if you want a solo review of Architects, then let me know and I'd be happy to do a standalone addendum review dedicated to solo and as always thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and thanks for being an awesome community to take part in i have been jack for the cardboard herald